Hey, welcome to Home Renovation, YouTube channel designed to help homeowners do renovations and get professional results. Today we're talking about nail pops. Man, I hate these, and if you're planning on any paint project in your home, stay tuned, you're gonna need to know how to fix this mess. One of these bad boys, sure to happen in every project you're on. The reality is, is it doesn't matter how new or how old your project is, if you're planning to paint, you're gonna be adding moisture to that wall, and there's a good chance that sooner or later you're gonna find a screw that just gives up the ghost. So here's the reason why. Sometimes the wood that's in the wall, it's drying out and it's twisting because the fasteners aren't in there properly, or it's just at a part of that tree that spruce grows like this, so when it's drying out, it wants to untwist. This kind of thing is gonna happen. The other reason is sometimes when you're putting in a drywall screw, if the screw goes too far and it gets past the paper, then it doesn't have the structural integrity to hold the wall tight to the 2x4, especially if the wall is built where the studs aren't lined up. So there's under pressure. As soon as you add moisture, ah, everything relaxes, soaks up the moisture, and boom, the wall pops off. And what you're left with here is just a clump of mud that was covering that screw, and it's raised up off the surface. So I know it's frustrating because you do a paint job, you go through all the prep, your walls look great, you sand, you do your first coat, everything's fine. And then about an hour or so later, you come back for your second coat and you've added so much moisture to the wall that this happens. So here's what you have to do to solve that problem. First of all, take your five in one. If you don't have one of these, you can use a regular drywall knife and you just chip that top off. And you might have the tendency here to want to just go ahead and do a little bit of touch up work on that and paint it. But if you watch this, if all you do is paint that, then you're gonna have a problem appear every time somebody presses against that wall. And it's gonna to continue to be a problem. So the only thing that you can do is get in there, you know it's a screw, and reverse it. Oh, there it is, okay, there's the culprit. So that's the right kind of screw. It's inch and a quarter, it's coarse thread. Not as coarse as I like to use, but that's fine. So here's how we fix the problem. First of all, we take the end of our five-in-one tool and we want to create a hole, okay? Because a hole can be filled. And then you want to take a screw and put it back in that existing space. And you're just gonna put it in nice and flush. Recess just a bit. The purpose of this screw is so that you can have something to fill the hole that you're not gonna need two applications a month. And then you go an inch below it. Look how much that moved, my goodness. And drive that screw till it's just dimpled a little bit. And you go an inch above it. And the reason I like to go above and beneath is because if, if this nail pop happened because the, the drywall's under compression and it's under pressure being attached to this stud, for instance, if these two are both raised proud and this one's in, then they're, they're, you're bowing the drywall here. So you're gonna want just a little bit of extra strength to make sure that doesn't happen in the future. Make sure not to break that paper. Now you've got the wall secured. No matter where you push on this wall, nothing's popping and you're gonna last a long time. The secret to this is how do you finish it and make it look like it's not a patch? That's coming up right now. All right, so I've mixed up a little bit of 45 minute compound and this is one of my favorite products on the planet. I love using this stuff because it dries quick, it has a hardener and you can patch a hole like this and it won't shrink, okay? So it's a one application. So within one hour, you can fix this, patch it and paint it and walk away and be done. So great for touch-ups. And if you wanna learn how to mix this mud, we have a special video dedicated to the process of mixing it on a hawk and that'll be in the description below. And here we go. Now, just before we put on the mud, take your knife and just pass it over. If you catch the screw head, then you have an option here. You can sink it in just a little bit more. If you can't fill the screw, that means there's a hole to be filled and you're in perfect position to do this. Just take a little bit of mud, press it in nice and thick. Okay, now because that middle hole might be a little bit big and you can see how it bubbles up, I'm gonna leave a little bit extra on there. Now I've made this incredibly smooth for a reason so that I don't have to do a whole lot of sanding here. I'm not using pressure over the middle, so there's something to be taken off when it dries. That's it for now. Now we just wait for this to dry. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes. And if you wanna know how fast this stuff dries, here's the rule. 45 minutes with cold water, 
uh, about 30 minutes if you're using warm water, 20 minutes with hot water, five minutes hot water in the country. <laughs> The funny thing is, as well water usually has a lot more minerals in it, and it just accelerates the rate this stuff sets up. So, if you're going to be using a lot of it, make it in small batches, or you're going to be real disappointed with your result. So next step after your wall is dry, you just take a sanding sponge, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy, and you just want to feather out the edges around the outside first, get rid of any ridges, and when you see the color of the wall starting to bleed through, that's when you know you got it feathered really nice. And then just a couple of quick up and down motions through the middle. Double check with your finger. If there's a ridge, you'll feel it. And you'll notice that the little screw hole spot is still dark. It means it isn't totally dry yet, but that's fine. It's a hardener. So your paint will actually sit on top and it won't be an issue. So what you do here is generally with 45 minute mud, one coat will work. But if you prime the spot with the same paint, it will work better. Okay, so there we go. Now we wait about 20 minutes, come back with a little mini roller, give it another shot. Okay, so the last step here now is after you get your brush roller on there, you want to take your roller and stick the sleeve on, and then we can roll this wall. Oh crap. All right, so I've got one kind of sleeve and one kind of mini roller, and they're not compatible. So, all right, we'll do this old school. Because it's just a tiny little patch, ah. You don't actually need to fill a tray and then put your roller in the tray. You can actually paint the wall and then just grab your roller and, and use it against the wall. Where's that spot? There it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just add a little bit of texture so that it blends even more than it was before. Okay. And that's all we need to know to do that. Uh, nail pops are really not an enemy. They're an opportunity, an opportunity to be closer to perfect. So this is how we fix them. Uh, feel free to share this video with your friends because I'm sure they all have nail pops too. And don't forget to like and ask questions about this and other related renovation questions that you have. My God, I still love to answer these things. It's, uh, it's uh, my only chance to really be in touch with you until we get our live show going, Max. Anyway, uh, we're going to give you a couple opportunities at the end of this video to see other stuff that's related to this. If you want to see this basement project we've been working on, you're going to want to click that link. And if you want to learn anything else, I don't know, I'm going to leave it up to Max to surprise us. He can pick a video that he wants to have you see. Anyway, that was bad English. Talk to you again in the next one.